I just got my upper crankcase uh, assembly back from the replating service and let me show you what I've got here <clears throat> so the main thing of course is that they've recoated these bores with nickel silicon carbide and rehone them so now I know that they're perfectly cylindrical there's no more interior damage and thrust marks uh, they also bead blasted the entire outer surface and part of the process of replating is they remove any remaining components from uh, this this upper crankcase so they had to pull out the remaining pieces that I left in like these cylinder head assembly bolts oil pipe crankcase breather pressed fit uh, receptor there these little oil ports that go under the journals anyway they pulled all that stuff out then they bagged it up shipped it back to me first thing I'm gonna do is uh, put all these components back into this cylinder uh, and um, I think I'll start with the oil baffle plate and with this there's a you can see that I put a little Permatex ultra gray right on this little top piece because uh, that's what the original had and then the bolts that hold this in I've got some Loctite, just the blue 248. You do not want these bolts coming loose inside your crankcase assembly. And then I'll press fit in the breather hose fitting, which is in, will go in that hole, but from the outside. Uh, there's a bearing that I'll need to press fit back right in here. That's this one. The oil pipe uh, delivers oil back to where this bearing is. So there's a port here, goes into this pipe, travels back here, and then feeds down into this hole and then falls back down behind this bearing. Okay, so that's how the oil baffle plate sits down on this thing. These bolts are torqued to 10 newton meters, and I've got a torque wrench that can do inch pounds or newton meters. And um, I kind of see how this works now. This baffle plate prevents the oil from getting up into this higher compartment and then the crankcase breather hose attaches uh, to the uh, outside um, of this. So this is sort of just um, an empty space inside the crankcase assembly that sits under this thing. Anyway, I'll torque these down and move on to the next part. Alright, next up I'm going to insert this oil pipe. This oil pipe inserts in this hole here and then you can see it has a little locator that way the port is oriented in the right direction and this will just tap right in should just kind of sit right in there and then you can see it delivers oil back into this opening here for this bearing there's also a tiny pinhole in the middle of this tube that looks like it sprays oil um, or drips oil whatever um, down into this axle assembly that that fits into here. Anyway, I called up Millennium and asked them what the deal was, and they knew right away. Uh, these sit down into these oil ports in each of the journal bearing seats, and these uh, help to restrict some of the oil flow uh, that comes into this journal bearing. So these just drop down and tap right into these holes. Okay, so I figured out how these go. Sort of the smaller end drops down right in there. I have a punch that fits nicely right in here. I tap that down and I can feel that o-ring slide down the surface and then I can hear when that bottoms out real easily. Next up, crankcase breather hose fitting. Again, fits into this orifice right here. Underneath this is that oil baffle plate. To be safe, I brought this over to the press. Now this one's going to be easy to push in because the bottom here is flat to this surface. So all I had to do is get it set. Now I'll push this down to that first detent there. Okay, that's done. Now the much harder one is going to be... axle bearing and for that I'm going to have to get real creative. The case will have to be oriented this way because the bearing will press fit down into this recess. 
So I'll get, you know, some sockets and a pipe and some other things so that the, the jack here on the press will be sitting up here and pushing down from up here to this area and heat it up. And this looks like it's going in just fine and dandy. And I'm going to say we'll probably... Probably good right there. kind of clever the way they did this because this bearing actually it sits up a little bit there's a little curb at the bottom of the recess that way there's enough room behind there for the oil to get back in time to reinstall the transmission so I've been looking over this diagram just to refamiliarize myself with with all the parts and where they go and which bolts need Loctite and which ones don't which ones have to be brand new I knew that already. I've already ordered new bolts uh, for the main axle. So anyway, um, I'm just going to follow the factory procedure here for installing the transmission. First up is the main axle assembly, uh, which is right here, and which fits into this opening, and then comes back here and slots into this press fit bearing. All right, that diagram right there shows me the proper orientation which I've now got right here and sure enough as I hoped these Torx T30 bolts that hold this main axle assembly on are long enough to catch uh, the holes and now I should uh, be able to put a few turns on each one uh, all the way down until I can uh, put the proper torque on it which would be 8.7 foot-pounds the next step in the installation is your shift fork C. This is the one that sits on the main axle assembly. And the factory manual is pretty clear. The orientation is that this comes up from the bottom. All right, so that tells me the little cam follower has to be there. This fits right in there. And you can kind of let this thing drop down uh, into the bottom area. You'll be able to manipulate it later by holding the arm with your finger right here. Alright, so put in that shift fork C. Uh, next, you go ahead and install the shift drum. I've oiled this up and cleaned it up. And this just slides right in this opening here. The shift fork C is down low enough it won't get in the way. And then this slides into a slot on the other side. Then the next step is your shift fork guide bars. Make sure you've got your springs in each end. Also, these springs are um, subject to breakage. I've read reports where these are broken and then the broken half of the spring goes flying around the transmission and wrecks it. So check these springs. Mine are in good shape, so I'm going with it. The other thing is these shift forks have to be straight. Mine are in good shape. There's a little discoloration, but otherwise they're in, they're in very good condition. So just a little bit of light oil on these things, just so I can slide this in, just like that. All right. And then again, make sure you get your right and your left and make sure you orient them correctly. I'm going to double check this after I'm done and make sure the top two shift forks are in correctly. There's another pretty obvious hole in the side of the crankcase here where this guide bar inserts. Just push it all the way through and it'll seat into the opposite side. Next up is the drive axle assembly which is dropped straight on top. Sort of just wiggle this around and drop it down. The shift forks are kind of fine where they need to go. And then get your guide into the proper recess there. And you want it sticking out I think about halfway according to the factory manual. And I went and checked the other side of the crankcase that comes down and it has a it has a corresponding slot. So alright that's in. This bearing seems to be sat down into its recess. The shift forks are in between these two gears in the middle. And at this point, this whole assembly should spin smoothly, which it does. 
the main axle underneath is spinning when I spin this. And everything works to be good. So that's the main steps to installing the transmission.